Hey everyone, I wanted to do a what to expect when you get a puppy video. I've done a number of these throughout my series, but I wanted to kind of bring everything together into this one longer video. Uh, this is geared towards people who are getting a puppy soon or want to get a Borzoi puppy, just kind of going through the logistics of the stuff you need, what to expect, the experiences we have, and as always, you know, all puppies are different, um, all experiences will be different, all dogs are different. I also am just giving my empirical analysis on what worked best. So first of all, congratulations. If you're getting a Borzoi, you have one entering your family. I'm super excited for you and please send me pictures. If you can follow me on Instagram, I would love to see. Um, I just wanna say that getting a dog, depending on the age, it's a lot of work. And I said this in previous videos, if for some reason you can take off some time or if you're like our family and you're still in lockdown, it's probably a great time to get a puppy, a lot of hands-on experience. What you need to expect is this creature is going to need constant care. It's gonna to need to go out all the time. I think with Aura, it was like after every nap, after every eat, after every sleep, once an hour when she was super young. And we got her at 11 weeks, so she was, she was very young. So, Disruption to your normal routine is kind of the one, the first thing to expect. Puppies grow so fast and borzois grow even faster than that. You'll expect that in the few weeks they'll get onto your schedule. You know, the one thing I would say is um, when you first get your puppy and you first bring it into your home, we noticed that Aura was just so enamored with her new environment and it was necessarily like, it was hard for her to grasp where she was, and it was a lot to take in. You know, she just got taken from her brothers and sisters. She just got taken from her parents. She's now with these weird people in this strange house with a different borzoi. So the first few days were just about acclimation. And I've read a lot that you shouldn't start training your dog until they get acclimated to your home. And another great tip that I read before I got Aura is that take your dog on a walk. Oh, we got something coming in, flying in from the... Careful that they, yeah, for sure. So take your dog on a walk around the neighborhood before you bring them in your house. You kind of want to set up very early on that the house is the resting place, not the active place. This made a big difference. It's kind of like that mentality, like when you're in the house, it's not a playtime, this is the den. And that's kind of a mentality that we found that dogs understand, or at least boars understand really well, is that this is my home, this isn't where the crazy this happens. This is this is where I sleep and where I eat. My wife passed me this note because this is a really interesting Borzoi specific fact. They grow incredibly fast, like an inch a week fast. Like it, it's it's shocking. You'll go you'll like one day you'll swear your dog was tiny. The next dog it's the next day it's huge. One thing you have to be wary of, and this is something that happened to Aura. They can grow unevenly. The stress of taking away from their litter and coming into your family can actually have them grow unevenly. One of Aura's legs was kind of like, and we were so panicked, we took pictures, we sent it to the vet. It's fairly normal. So high stress times can have them grow evenly. A couple of weeks went by and she evened out. I, it's just, it's fascinating. So get ready for some growth. Stuff I would have on hand when you get a puppy. This is just general stuff that we found worked really well. You're gonna need a lot of this uh, puppy cleanup spray. This is for your accidents, which are going to happen. You cannot prevent accidents, all of them. Uh, the best thing to do is, this is again, why you should be home and monitoring your puppy as much as you can. You have to divert them. When they start to go, you take them outside. That's the key. So have a bunch of this, have a bunch of paper towels, that's the best. Make sure you have a bunch of uh, poopy dog bags. I love these because they are biodegradable. This is key. Um, another thing, have a bunch of extra blankets. Uh, go to Walmart. Go to an inexpensive store. Get Order them off of Amazon. Maybe not Amazon. Um, and just get a bunch of extra blankets. These are going to be good. They're going to get pooped on probably or you know, something's gonna get on them. Have some throwaway blankets. This is gonna come in handy when we start talking about the crate too. Uh, martingale collars. So, all sighthounds should have a martingale collar. Martingale collars essentially have two loops 
the uh, leash goes on one loop and this goes around their neck. A lot of them are adjustable uh, and you should definitely get a martingale collar. You have to get a martingale collar. It's not necessarily, actually it's because the dog physically has a smaller head. A regular collar would just right off the top. You gotta make sure it's something that grips on your dog. Sight hounds again, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of, could be dealing with a lot of prey instincts. They are great leash walkers and they learn very well to be great on leashes, but have a martingale collar. You don't want your puppy slipping out. Uh, we had an experience with this when we first got Esper and it is utterly terrifying. So please have a martingale collar. Size wise, uh, they are very adjustable. This is an awesome martingale collar I got from Red Moon Dog Gear on Instagram. They are a small company. They made these custom for Aura and Esper and they're amazing. They got the medium size. You know, their necks aren't very thick. They're much more of a long-legged, a long-necked like giraffe type dog. So you don't necessarily, <laughs> an adjustable one on a smaller size is gonna work pretty well. Um, so potty, again, you're going to want to establish, they're going to establish where their spots are. You're going to want to take them out as much as possible. When you get the dog to pee outside or anything good, you can start rewarding immediately. Our dogs love these smoked chicken stacks, snacks from uh, Trader Joe's. So rewarding is so the key. You don't want to punish, you want to reward, especially when they're young. You take your dog, if your dog goes outside, man, you get a treat. Great job. The dog will associate very soon that that, okay, outside's where I'm supposed to go. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more when we talk about the crate about that and that whole den mentality. One thing, we live on a second floor apartment. Uh, it was very hard when we had Aura when she was young, 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 to get her outside and get her to a spot and get her to an appropriate area to pee very quickly. So one interim method, and this is something you can use if you don't have access to the outside very easily, is we got a pee mat. Now, they make all different types of mats, and the one that we love is this one here, if you can see it. This is a mat made of bark. It's a fully biodegradable mat, um, and you change it once a month. You know, it was, it, it's great. We don't really use it anymore. I have it. This is a just-in-case thing in the house if she, I don't know, panics. But these are great. The bark seems to keep the smell down. These are wonderful. These are a great interim thing. So... If you don't have access to the outside, you can't get them outside, have a pee mat like this, they, they establish a place, and then you can slowly take that place away. Make sure you put that pee mat by the door you're going to go out of. That was a mistake that I made. We actually put it in a different door that we don't use, so there was a little bit of a disconnect. So you want to make sure you put the pee mat near the door that you use to go out. Good bit of advice. So another thing is you're going to want to have a lot of activities for your dog. Once you get through this acclimation period, go ahead and start with training. Go ahead and start with the watch me, the basic commands, all that sort of stuff. Just have it ready to go. Um, I would also recommend puzzles. These are incredible, inexpensive things. You can put treats in them. The dog has to figure out how to get them. If your dog is very food motivated, these are great forms of entertainment. I found that a puppy is equal parts mental stimulation versus physical stimulation. And mental is actually more important in the beginning because you're going to get your dog. It's not going to have all of its shots. They're not going to be protected from parvo. You're not going to want to take them out to dog parks or going to socialize them in a is in an unprotected situation. You can't. You If your dog gets parvo, they're going to get very, 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 very sick. So... 11 weeks, they've probably had their second round. This is because the mother has still has some antibodies in there, so they're going to have to get the second, third, and fourth shots of the Parvo series. Make sure whoever you're getting your dog from is telling you about this. Uh, so you're going to be dealing with a lot of work in your house or in your yard or some protected area where you're going to want to stimulate the dog mentally. Physically, they don't need that much exercise. We made the mistake thinking that you got to tire your dog out. That's what's going to make them sleep. Puppies sleep 16 to 18 hours a day regardless because they are growing an inch a week. So we made the mistake of over-exercising Aura on some occasions when she was young, young. Uh, and in fact, the flip side happens. Just like when toddlers are over-sleepy, they go crazy. So you'll, you'll do this sort of thing, but it's a healthy balance. Make sure you get some 
puzzles to work on their mental stimulation in your home. Uh, you can do actually exercise in your home because they're so, 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 so tiny. Walks are great. Get them ready for the leash. Small walks around the neighborhood. Just make sure you're not interacting with a lot of dogs that could potentially infect them with anything. Um, I would say you can start early on with frisbees and balls. Esper could not care less about fetching anything. She doesn't. She doesn't even fetch her own food. You have to like wait for her to wander over there. So uh, every dog is different. Aura loves this stuff. She's into catching and running, and she's 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 my little energetic goofball. Um, so I think that's it. Have all this stuff online on on hand. Toys too. You know, you think your dog's gonna love a toy. They're not. They're probably gonna like your socks better than the toys you buy them. That's just the how it is. We have a toy. <laughs> we have a toy box full of things. Aura has learned that this box is hers, and this is something that you'll teach your puppy what's hers and what's not. Um, and she, she loves it. So she gets to go in there. It's a smorgasbord of different stuff. I'm gonna take the camera now into my bedroom, and uh, oh, good idea too, dog beds. We have a ton of dog beds. Boars always find their spots around the house, like where they want to sleep. Sometimes it's just terribly uncomfortable corners of the room, and I don't understand why. So once once a Esper or Aura has found a place that they want to sleep and it maybe is a little uncomfortable, we'll stick a mat down there and she'll sleep. So they make inexpensive kind of padded mats, have a lot of beds. Oh man, I'm super excited for you. The first three weeks is just this magical, weird time of this little fuzz ball. And my God, the growth is so cool. So I'm going to take you in the bedroom and show you the crate. A few things I want to talk about with the crate. And then I think you're going to be on your way. If you have any questions, please message me here. Send me a thing on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, anywhere. I'll, I'll get back to you, I promise. So let me switch you over to the bedroom. One sec. Okay, here is Aura's crate. A couple things before we get into the crate. You'll notice that I have a slow eater. This is a feeder uh, that is for dogs that eat too fast. If your dog is scarfing their food down and they eat way too fast, consider getting a slow eater. It's nice. So with crates, you want to get a crate that's large enough so when they're a fully grown dog, they can stand up, which means for a Borze, that's going to be the biggest available crate. You can see this one is gigantic. They make partitions. So when you first get your puppy this tiny little mush bean, it's not necessarily going to need a crate this size. With Aura, we put beds inside there. We, As you see, we covered up the tops of the crate to make her feel more comfortable, but they do sell crates with partitions. So you actually slide an extra gate down and then you can remove that to make the crate bigger as your puppy gets older. So the crate size is very, very, very important. You don't want it to be too small. You don't want to have to end up buying another crate sometime in the future. If you notice, we also covered up one of the halves of the crates with blankets. This was something we discovered that gave or the kind of the feeling I think more that she was inside of a den. Other than the, I think, second night, Aura has never had an accident in her crate. And this is part of the animal's den mentality. She understood very early on that this was my territory. I don't pee in it. You can start expanding the territory out from the crate uh, as they get older and they kind of start to understand, okay, this is my home. This is also part of my den, so to speak. And I'm not going to pee or do anything crazy in it. Uh, so that's it about the crate. Also, one tip that works extremely well. Save a treat that you that you never give them except for when they go in the crate at night or in the crate to sleep. So they get a very special award for going inside the crate. Everything about this crate is positive. We've never thrown in Aura here for punishment. They're, they cannot be negatively associated, especially at the start because it can be kind of tough. I did a whole crate video uh, more in depth, I think earlier on in the episodes, and that has a lot of good information. You have more questions about how we crate trained Aura, but it has been incredible. She loves it now. She actually comes in here and sleeps in the afternoon. So thank you guys. I will talk to you soon. Keep the questions coming. Appreciate it.